everybody. I just want to introduce you to somebody who's going to help us get our lives together a little bit. <laughs> Hi, Corinne. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Oh. Yes. Doing well. Hanging in there. <laughs> yes. Well, so are we all. And I want you to take a moment to introduce yourself because as the founder of Urban Simplicity and a professional organizer, you have you really have quite a background, though, in organizing people's lives, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so I've been I started Urban Simplicity um, 10 years ago, which I can't believe that this year is 10 years for the business. Um, and I started it in New York City. I previously had like a whole past life working in politics which um, I cannot tell you how glad I am to be out of that game now <laughs> and help people as opposed to frustrating people. Um, so I, I worked in politics for 10 years prior to founding the business. Um, I worked in everything from the mayor of City, um, City Hall, Mike Bloomberg, to the White House, um, really high intense um, campaigns uh, for, for like 10 years and then got really burned out and really just wanted to organize myself more than anything, which then made me realize that it's so in need. And at that time I was in New York and so people have small spaces and they're, they're so busy and they're challenged. And then um, three years ago, my husband got a job down in Florida. This is how we met, which is great. So I'm now down in Florida and have the business in Palm, the Palm Beach area, as well as up in New York City. And we organize anything you can think of. So any room in the home, garages, pantries, kitchens, everything. That's amazing. And I mean, really, like right now, a lot of people are talking about um, organizing their lives in a, a whole bunch of different ways. And um, it really is amazing. You know, it's, it's one thing when you just feel like, oh, I don't have time to deal with this, but it can really improve our lives and make us feel better, right? To be organized. Yes. Yes. So my the main thing I'm telling people right now with the challenges that we're all facing, which is whether it's now you're working from home with your spouse or now you're trying to homeschool your kids, it's that don't try to bite off more than you can chew, but think about what will make the biggest impact if you tackle it. So, for example, we'll talk about some of this later, but. Um, you know, specific ideas that, you know, you're in your pantry every day. Maybe that's a manageable project versus, for example, trying to pull everything out of the garage right now, putting it all out and realizing midway through, oh my gosh, what have I done? How am I gonna finish this? So I'm trying to focus people on really um, small manageable projects that they can do with, with minimal stress because we all need less stress right now for sure. Oh my gosh. And okay, so let's just start because you you want us to start with a few things that really are important to getting organized in a more healthy way, which I think makes a lot of sense right now. Um, yeah. As we think about, for example, the refrigerator, this is an area that is high use where bacteria germs can be can grow. And, and what do we do? How do we need to think about the refrigerator? Yes. So first of all, can I just say the photo you're looking at? I wish my fridge looked exactly like this right now, um, but it's stuffed. So we're all dealing with that fact that we've got probably like twice the amount of food that we normally do. And so how do we keep it organized? You're right. I think for, not just from a cleanliness perspective, although that's huge, also healthy eating it for our immunity. So what I try to tell people is orient it so your healthy snacks are more visible. So, for example, kids can go in and grab an apple, um, grab an orange, whatever it is. So thinking about it that way, the first step in organizing your fridge is always to pull everything out and wipe down every surface. So start there and look at expiration dates. Um, don't be afraid to toss things if they're you know, not going to be used because right now you really need in there what people are going to use and grab and, and what they need. And, and bins are very important, like you see in the photo here. The ones that I use for sodas and fridges or, or um, beverages are great because they really are safe space, or safe, safe space savers on those little shelves. Um, and then I always tell people, use bins to categorize items. So for example, maybe it's your carbs or your leftovers, um, condiments, separating those out so people know what you've got and nothing gets lost. Yes. Well, as we're going through um, the next thing, which will be the pantry, um, I know we did that. That was like our first 
organizational project here when all of this started. And you start to say, oh, I have these things. I don't have these things. And when you actually can see the condiments or whatever, <laughs> not exactly. going to buy something else. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Exactly. Okay. So let's move to the pantry. And again, this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> this is the most beautiful pantry ever. <laughs> I love this pantry. I, yes, this is a wonderful client of mine. Um, so the pantry, I say right now, is equally important to the fridge because, again, it's probably double stuff with what you normally have. So a couple quick tips that I always say is right now, food freshness is important. So you'll see I have the decanters up there for the pastas. Here in Florida, things go stale so quickly. So those are airtight canisters, and those are wonderful to keep, you know, chips and pastas and those kinds of things fresh. Um, cereal is also a great one. And then the other idea with healthy eating and building our immune systems right now and making sure things are clean and all of that is that you're putting snacks that are accessible and healthy lower for the kids to grab. That's really important. So kind of think through like, hey kids, this is your snack bin. This is what's in it and you're free to grab it. But you know that there's healthy stuff in there. And then you put the chips and the crackers and the junk food sort of higher for when you need it. <laughs> but, um, you know, really orient it so your family can get what they need without asking you 24 um, seven for whatever, whatever that is, which is tough at these times when everyone's home. Well, that makes sense. And looking at the pantry specifically, I see you have all these different shapes of bins, for example, is that something like, do you, do you measure first? How do you go about choosing your bins? So that's a great question. You always want to measure. So what I always tell people with any project, much like the fridge with the pantry, you got to pull everything out because you know, stuff gets stuck back there. You can't quite see after you pulled everything out, just do a quick measurement of the depth of the shelves and the width of the shelves. Usually in a pantry, you're lucky because you can adjust the height, which gives you a little flexibility. So there's a little room for error, but definitely the depth of shelves is important so you can get the right bins. And then think about it. So you know that crackers are tend to take up more space because they are bigger boxes if you haven't removed them. But whereas, you know, Ziploc bags can be put into those little bins at the bottom. Those are each of the individual size Ziploc bags, which is great because that's something people are using and grabbing every day. Oh, I so. love that. I, I've never seen Ziploc bags look that perfect. So that's <laughs> awesome. I may have to go looking for those. <laughs> like, this looks very satisfying. <laughs> it, it, that's a great one. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so now the bathroom, which, again high traffic area, the whole family's in and out, and we really need to be thinking about cleanliness in this time. So, the, uh, totally, and I feel like I'm like Clorox wiping my bathroom 24 seven, like I don't know how I have time to do anything else at this point, but um, so here's the thing about the bathroom. Um, you are going to want to declutter because that makes it so much easier to clean. So imagine that you're wiping down a, an area around the sink and you're not having to move 70 bottles to kind of get in there. So that's the first and major reason why it's going to be so much uh, healthier for you if you can get that decluttered. Um, and then with the bathroom, it's, it's a really great project for right now because under your sink is really manageable. It's not a big lift. It's going to feel better. You're going to make it better. So that's why I love to do this right now as well. And then in the bathroom, it's all about categories, okay? So it's like these are your bath items or these are your hair items. Um, and then that way you you know what you have. You can, you know, gather back stock. If you do have more than one shampoo, you know, they're all in one place. Um, it really helps to prevent overbuying, which is a major problem. Um, so, so, yes, the so bathrooms are, are critical right now to get organized. Oh my goodness. And just in this time, we're all talking about saving money and everything, just not overdoing it too. I mean, we're doing, we're ordering groceries in a different way. I mean, it's just a whole different pattern of life. So really knowing what we have makes, it makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. That's I great. always tell people that that's when organizing systems break down is when you're when your day-to-day -day life or your systems change. So if your schedule changes, your organizing systems that you normally have in place, they go totally out of whack. So we're all having to kind of like rework that in a way. So it's, it's tough. It's very tough. 
we'll try to be patient with ourselves, but also challenge ourselves to to do this properly. I don't know. Yeah. You also, the next section we're going to talk about are these more, not bite sized but more manageable things that have that <laughs> wonderful sense of satisfaction every time you open the door. Like, like let's start with the kids' art supplies, which um, right. I know I had a an art supply cabinet to rival every child. <laughs> it was a big yeah. art supply. Oh, cabinet. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, this is so beautiful, but also awesome because you can pull these bins out and allow a child to really go for it. Right. Right. You know, you're totally right. The first thing I always tell people is with the art area is make it portable. So two of the types of bins you see here are the ones that I love and they're super affordable. They are not expensive. Are the sh They're actually shoebox bins with lids from the container store. That's one of my favorites. And they come in a variety of sizes. So if you have like a ton of markers, you can get a bigger one and it matches, or you can get a smaller one for like a smaller amount. And then the ones right above it, they look a little gray here, but they also come in a clear color. These are called multi-purpose bins. I can't tell you, these bins could be used in every room of the home, from the kitchen to the arts. I mean, art areas, the bathrooms, and those are just really great. Again, with kids stuff, you don't want to have to invest in anything super expensive. And these do the trick regardless. Um, the other thing with the kids art stuff is labels, 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 because kids will put things back if they know there's a system. Um, and if it's something they're involved in and they can kind of enjoy, um, it all makes a difference. So always label. Um, and then the other thing is right now, kids are home using the arts and crafts, right? You're trying to keep them busy. So this might be a project that the whole family can do together, which I really like. And so that's kind of just like teaching those organizing fundamentals in a way that they're, you know, going to be able to use, you know, with the stuff that you use, which is probably more interesting to them than their like clothes or whatever. Yes. And it looks so pretty. What a satisfy, like satisfying thing for for your whole family to really get involved in and it eliminates because there's always everybody in the family does this a little differently there are the people who get everything into the cabinet but just close it no matter what it looks like and the people who leave the things out because it's not organized so it eliminates both issues exactly that's great okay so now the linen closet and this is an area that can become so weird and unwieldy and just wild. So how do you approach this? So this is what I always say and why I put it on the list to talk about today for like a right now project. Literally everyone I've ever organized has too many towels and too many sets of sheets. I mean, it's, it's just like a universal thing. And so one thing I just want to say is right now, animal shelters, um, even though dogs are being adopted, they still are going to need these supplies. So if you can go through and cut down on what you have and declutter, you can donate those items to shelters, which is a great idea. It makes you feel good about letting, letting things go. Um, and here's a little equation that I just always say. So, count the number of members in your family, count your guest rooms, multiply it by two, and that's how many towels and sheets you need, okay? So um, you don't need 60 towels for a household of four. So I like to put, you know, a little bit of math to it, um, just because it's hard for people to let go of these things. But so the other trick in, an, in a closet like this is Bins are great for sheet sets to keep them together as well as hand towels and um, washcloths and those types of things. And then shelf dividers, which I actually don't have in this photo, are great if you've got a tight space um, and you maybe have a set of, of sheets here next to it, you can use a shelf divider, which keeps them divided and, and standing up and also label the shelf in front of it. That's always important. So that if you've got more than one person changing sheets in your house, they always know what goes where. So oh, that makes it so much easier. And yeah, that big topple effect. If things get real skinny and tall, you're right. That that would make a huge difference to have the, the shelf divider. Yeah. So smart. OK, yeah. now Love this it. is an area literally called the junk drawer. I mean, because it just collects all of the junk and we all have some version of this in our home. Everyone has it. I think that this, if I, if I, if this had just happened, I probably would have ran to my junk drawer and just started fixing it right away because it's, it's so quick and it's also so satisfying. And so here's what I always say about junk drawers. Think of it as a utility drawer, 
not as a junk drawer, mm -hmm. okay? A junk drawer gives us the right to just throw stuff in it. And a utility drawer is the most useful items in your home, things you need to grab, notepads, scissors, you know, candle lighter, whatever it is. Um, so the first thing to do with a junk drawer is just pull everything out, sort it, toss, but then think about what you use and what you want to grab. Do the kids need access to a notepad? Do you, I mean, it's, it's very satisfying. And drawer organizers, like the ones that are in this photo, are the best. Um, I always say outfit the full drawer with organizers um, in various sizes and then put them in because that helps you just, uh, that won't get shoved into the side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. More than yeah. you know. Yeah, so how many yeah. times have we tackled that at this house? Like, I don't know what it is. And then you go in there and you're so right and you have like, 15 things of super glue. What is going on? <laughs> exactly. So definitely declutter. That's the first step after you pull everything out. Okay. Well, that is like the most beautiful utility drawer, utility drawer that we've ever seen. It looks so good. Okay. So this is one that could, in some houses, um, could take days and that is the master closet. So you do have these kind of bigger bigger projects that you think, you know, we can take this time and create an incredible sense of achievement and uh, really enhance our, our lives and organization. The closet's a great place to be for that. It is. It is. So, so the closet is, I, I, how many closets have I done in 10 years? I can't even tell you. And it's a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it's a big undertaking. But if you've got the time and you can do it, now is the time. So again, the first thing you wanna do is pull everything out and go through it. Obviously you wanna declutter to a certain extent because it's just gonna feel better when you put everything back that it all fits. So of course decluttering is, you know, 101. That said, what also happens when you pull everything out of the closet is that you're looking at it in a different way. So don't just say, oh, that's where my shoes always look. I'm gonna put them back there or that's, so it gives you an opportunity to sort of re-envision the closet completely, thinking about your priority levels. So you might be a person who only wears workout clothes, but for some reason they're shoved in a lower drawer. That doesn't make any sense. Or maybe you're a person who always wears jeans, but for some reason they're folded and they're hard to get to versus hung. So kind of think through your priorities when you're addressing your closet. Um, so that's really how to get a system that like really works for you. And then I would say the fun part is how do we make it look beautiful? Like those closets we see in the magazines or, you know, on Instagram, it is so much of matching slim hangers are key. Okay. The shoe boxes in this photo are wonderful. And these are actually the same ones I use in all areas of the home, but in the craft areas as well. Mm -hmm. um, shoe boxes are great. Shoes get dusty, they get dirty. Um, this is a way to double stack and maximize space. It sort of just depends on your closet. Um, and then bins and labels. So the, the gray bins you can kind of see above the drawers here, they are great. They hold rolled up workout tanks. They hold rolled up you know, she wears that she would wear every day. So those are easy for her to grab and put back. Um, and then it really fits the style of her home as well, which was a fun to figure out. Oh, it's so beautiful. And there is something so satisfying. I love how you approach this, like kind of like the way we think of clothing, like the clothing should fit the woman, not the woman fitting the clothing. And same with your closet. Like, why are we trying to make it work in, for something that it doesn't work. And those slim hangers, I'm telling you, when you have a TV news anchor woman's wardrobe and it's like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I can I only imagine. Right. Yes. But those slim hangers, it's like, okay, now you can actually see things they can move. It's, and I don't know, I, it seems like you kind of do the same thing. I've always done by color and sleeve length. Mm -hmm. And that is so peaceful. Yeah. You're, yeah, good point. I always tell, I do the same thing. Buy sleeve length, so from uh, from sleeveless to short to long, and then um, by color. 
So some people have more color and more and more people are having less color. I have a ton of color you can see behind me here, but um, so it kind of just depends on the person, but I always try to do by color as much as possible. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so now this is a fun one, but also can be a big project if you're somebody like me, the craft closet. Uh, this is such a fun picture, by the way. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I had to put this on here for you because I was like, she's going to love it. Well, and can I tell you, this is only a small part of the whole craft closet that, that was done. Um, and this just kind of gives you a, a snippet of it. So you, so maybe you're not a craft person. Maybe this isn't your home, but this could be, you know, anything. I mean, this could be gift wrap for some people. This could be, you know, some sort of collection. I think it's all about like thinking about what area is your passion and what you have a lot of that's like not as organized and displayed as you want it to be, I think. And so for this person in particular, it's crafts, which is amazing. Um, and the thing that I want to mention here about this is that, first of all, obviously things are divided by category. So you see it's like ribbons and um, paint and all of that. But the other thing in a closet like this that gets as much use as this one does for this client is clear bins so you can clear and matching bins let me say so you can see what you have the the uniformity on the shelves is really satisfying um and also things that are movable and grabbable so like the markers or the crowns or the paints things that you're going to need to like take out and put on a table that could be portable and go back that's that's one great way to do it um so yes yeah, so this is just Again, the green closet of crafts, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so right when you start to look at it in that way of uniformity, even though the objects inside may be chaotic if you were to just shove them in there. Doing this gives it that visual relief that you can actually see what you have. Exactly. It's all about seeing what you have. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to see everything. But actually, a lot in a situation like this where it's things that you use all the time or that you, you kind of have to identify by color, clear bins are the way to go. And when they match, it becomes like a beautiful outcome. Yeah. So it's actually really pretty. I mean, it's amazing. You know, we, we think about organization in so many different ways in our life. And it is truly, it is when you just do even just that little bit, the rest of your life feels a little bit more manageable. Are you, I mean, are you hearing from people that this part of my life feels organized, this does not? Is it normal to feel like not all the pieces necessarily match all the time? Absolutely. I think um, even day to day, people are struggling with organization. So I would say eight out of 10 people you know, if, if I, I, I've been doing this long enough, I can tell you, like, eight out of 10 people are like, I can't do it. There are, like, the two people are like, oh, my gosh, it's my passion. I love it. And, and I'm like, you should become an organizer because this is, like, made for you. But, you know, I would say it's it's that many people out of 10 that have a problem with it. And then, like I was saying, when our schedules get changed or our work environments get changed, or like I always have said this for years, when you move, when you have a baby, when you get married, all of these sort of like life changing elements are when your systems break down and you kind of have to figure out the new ones. And so right now it's happening a lot with people. So I'm just telling people, you know, be patient with yourself. And again, like you mentioned, be patient with yourself and, and know that, you know, everything little thing you're doing is is making a difference um and then the other thing i would say is if you can focus on minimizing and decluttering even if you can't get like the final bin in you know this month or whatever the less that we can uh, accumulate the easier the organizing is going to be on the back end so even if we can kind of get rid of excess now that's that's like one one way to do it, which I think comes along with like a change and a different way of living. And so it's interesting. Yeah. And you make such a great point that now is a great time to be supporting others who need it. So that linen closet helping out a local animal shelter or a local, mm -hmm. you know, resale <laughs> shop or a donation store where that may really help people out because we know there's been a lot of flux right now in people's lives. And, and so that helps our neighbors and helps our home. <laughs> That's good. Exactly. Even in your pantry, you know, I know a lot of people accumulated things like canned goods and maybe you're not going to end up eating them, but 
think about how you can donate those come summer to like a food bank that's going to need them. So there's a lot of like little ways that we can reuse what we don't ultimately end up needing. So awesome. Well, thank you so much. I already feel like more motivated and more prepared to tackle thank something you. today. <laughs> no, I think this is like a wonderful platform. It's been so helpful for me to just stay connected like on Facebook and Instagram during this time. I mean, I don't know what I'd be doing as a business owner if I couldn't connect with people on this platform. Um, and I also want to mention that I'm, I am encouraging people to do virtual organizing. So DIY simplicity and as much as people um, want to connect here on Facebook to kind of like talk and I'm even just supporting people through like saying, oh, that's your photo. What? Here's a quick fix or whatever it is. Just, you know, connect with me on Facebook or however, yes. Instagram. And I'd love to, you know, chat. <laughs> so it's worked out that you've been able to do some of that remotely. You, you always would think like, okay, you know, this has to be done where the person's sitting right next to me. But maybe some of that client relationship is happening this way. That's amazing. It's great. No, and I think because of organizing, you know, small, uh, you know, my passion here is that all small businesses have been hit so hard and, um, you know, the restaurants and everything else. And so not being able to go into homes and organizing has helped me figure out a way I can still connect with people and help them. And so, um, and while they're hopefully helping themselves, like you said, get some inspiration to do some things in their home. Every little bit helps, I think. Awesome. Well, definitely everybody take a moment, do yourself a favor, get some eye candy in that feed and go <laughs> follow Urban Simplicity. It's, it is really like, it's, it's beautiful. My, my utility drawer will never look like just like that, but it okay. will, it does inspire you to say, okay, yeah, like this is possible. I could do this. <laughs> I can live yes, like that. <laughs> you totally can. You totally can. But thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Thank you. We appreciate you. And we'll we'll see you soon, I hope. <laughs> okay. I hope so. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Right. Thank you.